A contact point is the exact cross-site placement location where you spot the enemy when both you and the enemy rush out of spawn at the same time. It's important information to know in CSGO since both teams have to rush to the bombsite to make sure the other team can't settle down too quickly. In Valorant, it's a tad different because when the prep phase ends, the defenders are already settled and the attackers are already as close as the spawn barriers allows them to. But if you think about it, that only makes contact point analyzing in Valorant more important. There is such little distance between the teams, plus the consistency of the spawn barriers, would mean that if you knew where to place your crosser, when the round starts, you could in theory, always claim that entry kill. Surprisingly enough, no one has ever made a video on the subject, even though it's such an important thing to know if you want to claim that early advantage. So here we go. Today, we take a look at Bind, seemingly everyone's favorite map, and mine too, actually. There are four choke points we will take a look at to determine where you should place your crosshair and in which scenario, to ensure that all you have to do when the enemy appears is to click your left mouse button. Let's start with the fountain contact point. For starters, if you want to be quick, do not go in front of the fountain. Taking the path in front of the fountain allows the defender to set up next to the teleporter which means he can easily get away. When both the attacker and defender run out at the same time, this is the exact spot where they will meet. Meaning, if you want to aggressively peek as an attacker, that you should aim around this height and be ready for someone to appear when the big flower is about to be fully revealed. Do keep in mind that higher ranked players know that they should actively try to distance as far from the cover as possible, so don't be surprised if they are a little lower than you expect them to. To be safe, I would recommend to glue your crosshair to the third row of bricks, at least when you want to claim that freebie. On the defending side, you can expect someone to swing you the moment the right side of the fountain starts to appear on your screen. Or below this bush. Crosshair-wise, you want to line up your crosshair with the bottom of the bush, or 2.5 times your crosshair above the blue line on the corner. If no one swings you from the back, be ready for them to swing you from the front of the fountain, meaning they will swing you from here. Luckily for us, this also lines up with the bottom of the wall, making it another free kill. So once again, expect them at the bush, and if not, you'll have plenty of time to utilize the corner wall for cover, and for your crosshair to move itself to the bottom of the wall. The next choke point is the hookah choke point. These are the exact locations you'll meet each other. As an attacker, you want to preempt your crosshair roughly right below the top of the stone part of the wall and expect your opponent to appear right as you see this white, suspicious stain on the wall. Just imagine shutting down that overconfident sage, wouldn't that feel satisfying? Well, let's hope she doesn't watch this video, because from the defender's perspective, the moment you would spot the enemy is right here, around halfway the sign on the wall. Finding their head level is a bit tougher here, as there isn't an easy way to indicate where their head is. But, as a rule of thumb, make it one crosshair below this sign. Unless they want to actively counter what you just did, it's more likely that the defenders will be slowly creeping out of spawn, or worse, holding you. If that's the case, you want to place your crosshair at the same height as before, or one crosshair below where the colors meet on the wall. And obviously pre-fire the corner of the arch, Metten. The cubby choke point. This choke point has an issue though, because there isn't only two ways for the opponents to come from, but also the possibility of the defenders waiting on site with their many angles, while in the meantime, the attackers have to clear everything. Because of this, we take a look at multiple scenarios and see how you can benefit from them. If you're playing an agent with abilities that allow you to get on top of the box here, you get an easy but fast angle onto your opponent. Especially with an operator, it seems really OP and a nice way to claim a freebie. If you want to counter this as an attacker, you want to place your crosshair on the middle of the letter A, or one crosshair above the line on the wall, resulting in an easy counter. As a defender, you want to put your crosshair on the right side of the eyebrow painting on the wall and click when you see someone cross. If you play an agent without an ability to get on top of the box, you can take a bit of a riskier angle down the stairs here. You will spot the enemies at roughly the same position. This time though, you want to place your crosshair on top of the eyebrow. As an attacker, to counter it, you want to put your crosshair on top of this tire here and you can even wallbang the wall here if you manage to line it up. If the attacker is coming from the left side, it's quite simple. The attacker needs to peek the lamp corner, while the defender holds the left side of cubby. To be honest, you're better off pre-firing this angle anyway. Because, you know, freebies. The final two scenarios are about when the defender is playing aggressive and pushing to you for gods knows why. 
When this happens, you're in luck if you're on the left side as an attacker, as you will be able to catch the guy before he goes into the corner. If the defender is pushing the right side, you should ready your crosshair on top of the crates here, while the defender should, once again, look at the right top side of the eyebrow. The final choke point of mind is the bathroom contact point, which luckily is a lot simpler than the one we just covered. These are the exact points you'll spot each other, and this is where you aim as an attacker. Just blow this bit you want to be ready for the over-aggressive player. And once again, keep in mind that it could be just that tiny tad more close or further away than you predicted. So be ready to adjust your aim. The defender, on the other hand, should line up his crosshair with the tiles above this hole to make sure he gets a clean headshot. Don't forget though, they might run in front of the steps if they are less experienced, so be ready to flick down back to head level. And that's it for the contact point analyzing for bind. I hope it's been useful, and if so, let me know in the comments what map you want to see next. And before I end the video, thank you everyone who joined the channel for the past few days. Like, honestly, let's try to get 100 subs soon. When I originally recorded this, I had like 40 subscribers, and at the time I finished this video, which is three days later, I just passed 300 subscribers. It's insane, thank you so much. Anyway, that's it for this video. Click here to watch my previous video, where we find out if you can get a 7k in an unrated or competitive game, or here if you want to know if you should actually buy the Ares instead of the Spectre. Thank you so much for watching, and until the next one, farewell.